Hi there, it is Felicity here from Bankery Spinal Health and I'm doing this video today. Uh, we're going to talk about flat head syndrome or plagiocephaly is the uh, official term for it. So we get asked this a lot um, and this is a hugely common reason that parents might bring their babies into the Bankery Spinal Health Clinic. Um, because they're worried about the babies having a flat head, they've noticed some asymmetries in the baby's skull and they want us to have a look. And so I get asked lots and lots of questions about this. Um, so I wanted to do a video that I can send out to people so they can decide whether the clinic is the right choice for them or not. Okay, so firstly, what is plagiocephaly? So it is basically, I've got a little baby skull here. So basically, Sorry, this is the jaw, the jaw fell off. Basically, this is a baby skull and plagiocephaly is a flattening of one part of the skull or sometimes it's completely flat at the back. That's called brachiocephaly. It's a slightly different term, but it's more or less the same thing. Um, and this happens because a baby's skull, baby's tiny little head, um, the skull's bones are all quite movable, which obviously they have to be when they when babies come out of the birth canal. It's amazing how much their skull bones sometimes need to overlap in order for the baby to come out safely. So um, this is part of the reason why some babies develop plagiocephaly is because of the moldability of the bones in the skull. So the bones haven't yet fused together, that comes much later in life so that the baby's brains can grow. So uh, it's, there's lots of different reasons as to why plagiocephaly can develop. So I'm going to talk about some of the reasons that we know of um, and that we see in the clinic. So the first reason is the baby might have some tension in some part of their body, which makes the baby more comfortable to lie with their head facing one way or the other. So as a really basic example, you have a muscle here called your SCM, or it's called sternocleidomastoid, here. If this is slightly tight, for whatever reason, it's slightly tight, the baby's head can end up being like this. But of course, most newborn babies, the safest place for them to be laid down is on their back. So the baby gets laid down on their back more consistently on this one side of their head. If they're tight this way, then they would be more likely to the one side would impact the cot or the bed or whatever the baby's sleeping on um, more often than the other side. Okay, so just for that very, very basic, simple fact, that the baby's head is getting pressure more consistently on one side than the other and a flattening develops because of that, okay? Sometimes it's as simple as just this bone is flat, but what we very often see is when this bone is flat, it pushes all the other bones. So we would see an asymmetry, this is the front, so we would see an asymmetry like this bone would come forward. Sometimes we see an asymmetry in the eye. Sometimes one eye looks like it's forward compared to the other one. Um, sometimes babies will open their mouth and their jaw goes off to one side because there's asymmetry in the bones in the middle of the skull. Um, if you just have a look, so this is the baby's jaw here. So I'm just gonna turn it upside down and just take the jaw away. Look how many, you can see this really nicely with this baby skull model, all the different colored bones and they all articulate together. So you can see just how easily one bone that is pushed out of place, how easily that could affect all the other positions, all the other bones and their positions. So, Plagiocephaly is more common in babies who have been born prematurely um, because their skulls are not as developed as an older baby and they're more likely to have needed some time in um, a neonatal ward so they would obviously be lying for longer. 
um, so they're more likely to develop these flatheads. The same reason is for twins. Obviously twins, it's inevitable, they're going to be left lying for longer than a single baby and also they're more likely to be born earlier. So twins have a much higher likelihood of having plagiocephaly um, than a regular single baby. Um, we also see babies who have been delivered by forceps. Of all the babies that we see with plagiocephaly, there is a higher proportion of babies who have been delivered by forceps in comparison to babies who have not. Um, that is not to say that forceps causes plagiocephaly because it doesn't, because we see just as many forceps babies who don't have plagiocephaly, but I'm just saying out of the babies who we do see with plagiocephaly, a higher proportion of them would have had forceps um, deliveries. Well, because the forceps go around the skull and they have to push very hard to obviously get the force necessary to pull the baby out. So, what I wanted to talk about is how we help plagiocephaly and more importantly, what you can do yourself to help a baby who you think has plagiocephaly or we have diagnosed plagiocephaly. So um, we can probably help uh, a baby with plagiocephaly more likely if the baby is less than 12 weeks old. That seems to be the cutoff that we see a noticeable difference in how successful our treatment is with regards to evening out the skull. Um, so basically, if you're concerned about your baby having plagiocephaly, get it looked at sooner rather than later, because if you get it looked at sooner, it's usually an easy fix. Later is much more difficult because as the skull gets bigger, the bones begin to fuse. They don't fuse fully until much, much, much later in life but they begin to fuse its thought um, within the first kind of four to six months of life. So uh, I wonder if that's why we see this difference um, before 12 weeks. Um, the other thing that will guarantee your success rate of helping a baby with plagiocephaly is if you as the parents do some stuff at home, and we will always give you uh, guidance on that, but I'll just go through it in this video anyway. So we'll go through that at the end. So the most common tension patterns that we would see in a baby with plagiocephaly, first of all, like I mentioned, the SEM, the SEM muscle here, if that's just too tight or it's shorter on one side than the other, then that can tilt your head like this, tilt your baby's head like this. The second one is any tension in the neck, which babies would very, very commonly have that we see in the clinic. It's one of the most common findings that we have. Um, and I don't know if that's due to birth trauma or if it's due to problems feeding and baby develops tension in the neck because of the positioning when they're feeding is not quite right. The truth is we don't know why these things happen. Um, the other areas of tension more commonly that we find are kind of fascial tension. So uh, tension down the side of the baby or um, down their backs. So the baby's kind of banana shaped on one side. Um, and obviously if they're more likely to be turned over to one side, then they're more likely just to be leaning on the one side of their head. Um, so with regards to a baby with plagiocephaly, our job is not to physically try to mold the skull back into the right position. That's not what we're doing. We are working on the tension patterns in your baby so that your baby can turn its head both ways, more often um, so that the weight distribution when they're lying down is even and we're just um, reducing any tension in the rest of their body so that they don't grow up to have these asymmetries um, as their bones grow and develop. Um, there are lots of things that you can do at home if you have a baby with plagiocephaly. Whether you've been into the clinic or not, all of these things are good ideas. So the first thing I always say to parents to do when you have a baby with plagiocephaly is take photos once a week at the same time every week. Use your phone, set an alarm, say on a Monday morning, 9 a.m. or whenever suits, and you're taking photos of your baby skull. The reason being, I remember what it's like to have a baby. You forget very quickly, and every time you look at them, you think, 
is it has it got better or has it not got better I don't know because I see them all the time it's it's like when you look at old pictures of your baby and you think oh my goodness you've grown so much and you had no idea um, because you see them all the time 24 hours a day you're looking at them basically so take photos when you take your photos you're taking them from the top of the head from the, both sides of the head from the back and if there's any facial asymmetry from the front too and every week and you put them in an album so that after a few months you can look at, at the original and at where you are and you can say yes that did make a difference thankfully or if it doesn't then you need to look at other things that you can do which we'll talk about in a second the other thing that I always, always recommend for um, babies with plagiocephaly is a carrier. And um, we're lucky where we are, we have loads of really cool um, sling consultants that can help you. Um, <clears throat> and there's tons online that can help you find a carrier that suits you. We're also in Scotland, so uh, all new babies get a baby box and there's a lovely little sling carrier in there. Um, the reason why carriers are so important is it's great for baby's posture um, anyway in a, a perfect carrying position is beautiful for a baby's ideal posture but it also if your baby is facing in the way where's my baby if your baby is facing in the way then there's no pressure on the back of their head so that flat spot is getting some space here which is what we want if the baby is sitting in a car seat and you know, let's say they've got tension in their neck, then that is just exacerbating the problem. So you want to always carry your baby in a comfortable carrier this way whenever you possibly can. So moving on to car seats, obviously I know they're a necessary evil, obviously we have to use car seats. I would limit the amount of car seat time a baby with plagiocephaly has, if at all possible. And also a lot of uh, the car seats are travel system, so you can just pick up the car seat and put it in a pram please try and avoid doing that if at all possible because it just prolongs the amount of time that they are just sat with the pressure on that flat bit. So another thing you can do, which is something we always recommend anyway, is tummy time. So officially, I think it's from six weeks onwards is um, the guidelines here. They recommend tummy time. So you want to be getting your baby used to tummy time as much as possible. Again, for this simple reason, it just takes the weight off the back of the head. You want to also, with regards to, obviously we're talking about travel systems, the same thing goes for baby bouncers or anything that, you know, you just plop your baby in and leave them there. I totally understand everybody needs some time. <laughs> I remember I've had two babies myself, I remember what it's like. But of course, if you are worried about plagiocephaly or there is a noticeable plagiocephaly, do consider wrapping your baby up um, in a wrap or a carrier close to you instead of putting them down. The other thing I would always say, if you are bottle feeding your baby, you want to make sure that you are not always feeding on the same side. This is so common because most of us are right-handed so we're more likely to feed like this. So do consider alternating every time you feed because bottle fed babies, in my experience, are more likely to be held like this and end up with uh, a pattern like this. And I'll always say, if I notice it in a bottle fed baby, I'll say, oh, do you always feed this way? So just try to alternate. Obviously, if you're breastfeeding, that happens naturally. So um, the other thing is when a baby is asleep, and keep in mind, we would always encourage you to stick to the back to sleep uh, campaign guidelines. So the safest place for your baby to sleep is on their back. However, the same thing is gonna happen if they're turning their head one side all the time, they're gonna develop that flat spot. So what you should do is you wait until your baby's asleep and you just very gently try to turn them the other way. In the earlier stages of finding these restriction patterns, you'll find your baby will stay like that for a bit and then they'll ping back round. But what we usually find after we've worked on the babies a few times is that they actually begin to be very comfortable on the other side and they'll sleep uh, for as long as they want to sleep with their head facing the other way. The other thing that I have noticed in a few of my baby um, patients who I've seen a significant improvement in their plagiocephaly, 
in comparison to others is that they have used the pillows with the dips in, and I'm trying to remember the name of, of one of them and I can't. This to me makes sense and I can see why they would help plagiocephaly. However, what I would say is I don't believe these pillows fall in line with the current uh, guidelines for um, safe sleeping. So I think it's completely up to you whether you want to use them in the cot at night time. Um, but I, I don't think any of them follow official sleep guidelines in this country. There's nothing stopping you using them during the day. The other thing I would say is if you do all of this and you see a body worker um, and you've done your photos and you notice that there isn't an improvement, there is an option to take your baby to see somebody about getting a helmet fitted. Um, we actually have one that's a, a few hours away from us. I actually hear nothing but great reviews about them. Um, and we do, we have done in the past, recommended mums go um, and get a consult with them. If we meet a baby for the first time and we think this is actually out with our control or the baby's a lot older, um, we do say we think you might want to consider a helmet. So how do we know when a baby's um, plagiocephaly is out with our control? So we have a tool. So everybody who comes in with plagiocephaly, uh, we use this called a brachiometer. I don't know if you can see, um, this moves like that, okay? So this goes, up, and it's a nightmare to try and measure. So it goes on baby's head like this, and so you measure one side and the other side. And then we rate the difference on our chart and this tells us um, is this something to worry about or do we think we can deal with it ourselves. We're really doing our best for your baby and trying to measure everything correctly. So I hope that was helpful and um, do send us a message for any more information or if you think I've missed anything or any more questions do just comment below. We run an infant drop-in clinic. You basically just show up and we see you when we see you. Uh, more info about that in some of our other videos that I'll link to. If you don't live near us, you would like to book a video consultation with me, then we can do that and I can show you how you can work on your baby at home. And uh, yeah, I hope you find that helpful and just let us know if you have any questions. Okay, thanks. Bye.